So in this video, I'm going to show people how to use the jewelry kit over here to create bezels or under bezels really for gemstones that are not round. So there is a tool here in the kit for creating under bezels for round gemstones, but there's nothing to directly help you create bezels for non-round gemstones. But still the kit can assist you with that. It's just a little, going to be a little bit more of a manual process. We'll start off by creating a new file. And whenever you're making uh, jewelry in Rhino, as a general rule, you're going to want the small objects millimeters template. So we'll go ahead and open that. I'm going to go, I just double clicked on the perspective uh, viewport and we're going to bring in a non-round gemstone first. So we're going to click on the gem loader tool here and we'll set the shape to emerald, but you should be able to use this technique with any of the shapes. I'm just using emerald as an example. It's up to you if you want to include a cutter or not. I will include the cutter, but you must include the outline. Uh, that's going to be what helps us create the bezel. I'm going to give the emerald a width of four and I will let the length and height just be default uh, dimensions by leaving them blank. Okay, let's go ahead and go into shaded view here. And there is the outline that is a red curve right here. And we need to select that. So it may be easier for you to turn off the gym and cutter layers first, and then you can select the outline and then you can turn those layers back on. We'll go into the top viewport and we'll leave it in wireframe. Now you may want the bezel, the under bezel to go a little past the girdle of the gemstone, or you may wish it to come a little inside, or you may like it to be perfectly uh, aligned with the girdle of the gemstone. So if you want it to go out a little bit, if you'd like to add a little bit of extra metal past the gemstone, you can click on under curve tools, click on the offset tool, and then do something small like 0.1 or 0.15, and then just make sure that your cursor is outside of the outline. And then this would be the curve that you would use to create the bezel or under bezel. I keep saying bezel, but it's really an under bezel. If you want the uh, under bezel to be slightly inside the girdle, then you would do the offset, but put your cursor inside the outline when you click your mouse. Okay. Uh, and when you click on this line and click on offset, you can click on distance and set it to 0.15 or whatever. We'll just stick with 0.1. And I generally like to bring my uh, under bezel slightly outside the gemstone by like 0.15 or, or 0.1. Okay, but I think a lot of designers like to have it slightly inside the girdle. So that's gonna be a design choice on your part, but you can do either outside, inside, or you can just use the actual outline itself. Okay. so. Well, with that done, we're going to grab the offset curve that we just made. I'm going to go into the front viewport and just think about uh, typically you're going to want the a little bit of space between the uh, and it's telling you that you broke history. You can click OK on that a little bit of space between the girdle of the gemstone and the top of the bezel. So I'm going to go about there and then we're going to want the bottom of the bezel. So there's several ways we could do this, but what we're going to do is go to solid tools and grab the extrude tool. By default, it's gonna go in both directions. So up in the command line, click on both sides and set that to no, and then you can just drag down. You can either type in a distance, like say five, uh, that's quite a bit, or uh, you can just drag it down with your mouse until you like uh, how far it is. You do generally want the bottom culet of the gemstone to be uh, a little bit inside of the bottom of the of the bezel. Okay, so typically, as a rule of thumb, you want it about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 uh, millimeters. So if I grab the line tool, I accidentally grab the offset tool. If I grab the line tool and draw a line across here by the by the bezel there, we could offset that line by 0 0.5. Okay, and so. We want to go a little past a little past that. So let's grab this bezel again, this uh, outline up here, solid tools, and we could actually just snap down here like that. Okay, 
uh, now once you have uh, that done you can actually you can leave it like this so this is just a solid block right now you can leave it where it goes straight down that is certainly fine you can also hold down sh control shift and just box select uh, the bottom of the bezel there and then in the front view you can set a taper by grabbing the scale handle scaling it in a little bit it'll break history so you have to click OK through that you can go into the right view and also set a taper there with the scale handle as well and this, I like to do them independently the, from the different views the taper uh, but you can also hold down shift if you hold down shift uh, it will scale it in both directions but I typically like to do my taper independently uh, from the side view and from the front view. Once you're happy with the taper from both views, uh, then you can like click off of that so that you're not doing that anymore. And let's turn off the gem and the cutter. And up under solid tools, we'll grab the shell tool here. And it says select faces to remove. That's going to be the top face and the bottom face and we can set the thickness. So we'll, uh, you can click on thickness and put in whatever thickness you like. I'm going to try 0.8. Uh, 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 0.8 is a good rule of thumb for a minimum thickness. I'm going to hit enter and you can see it went through. Okay, so there is a slight problem here. Uh, th these seams right here are so close together that it's probably not going to let us fill it that. I'm going to try and see. So next radius, uh, yeah, 0.15 is probably good. I'm just going to box select the whole thing and hit enter a couple times. And you can see that it failed, right? So we have all these strange things happening. So I'm going to hit control Z. And what would probably be, uh, it would be okay if this was a perfect square or if there was more distance uh, between uh, these seams here. So it's really this seam and this seam are just too close. So what I'm going to do is hit control Z to we're back to being solid. You could leave it like that. Oh, let me hit Control Y. You could leave it like that and just fill it the outside of the bezel and just not worry about filleting uh, the inner parts. So you don't have to fill it. Uh, I like to fill it uh, for the renders. It's better for the renders. And uh, in my experience, it's been a little bit better for 3D printing. But we'll go ahead and grab this fillet. Uh, I'm sorry. We'll hit Control Z, go back to where it is solid, hit the shell tool. Let's just try 0.9 and see what that does for us, for our thickness. So it almost works. We get a perfect square down, uh, not a perfect square, but we get a, uh, a corner with one seam. But at top we get a, uh, it's even worse. We've got these two seams that are really close together. So let's try uh, 0.95 for the thickness, top and bottom. And it looks like uh, it almost worked, right? So let's just go ahead and go uh, with a one millimeter thickness. Uh, so we'll try that. And it looks like that worked for us. Okay, so now we have just a single seam right here. That should fill it fine. I'm just going to grab this, select all of the edges, hit enter a couple times. And yes, that filled it quite nicely. Okay, so that's up to you if you want to bother you know, adjusting your design. If it's really important that you have a 0.8 millimeter uh, thickness to your bezel, then you'll just have to not bother uh, beveling or uh, uh, yeah, beveling or filleting the inner edges. Or there's more advanced techniques you could use to get a fillet out there, but I'm not going to go over any of those in this video. So uh, you could leave your bezel like this and then hit the cutter, uh, bring the cutter back and cut that out using under solid tools using the boolean difference okay uh, so you, you that could be your finished under bezel and keep in mind this is an under bezel okay this isn't a bezel like if you're going to bezel set the gemstone but uh, okay so that's that I'm going to go ahead and hit control Z until we undo uh, the cutting that we made actually I'm going to control Z all the way back until we're at this stage and in case you want to have multiple gallery rails, you can convert this into gallery rails. So go into the front view. We'll make sure the project is on. Go to curve tools, grab the line tool. We'll snap right here. Hold down shift and pull out to the left and click. And I'm going to drag this line a little bit until it's centered like that. Uh, shift just helps keep you perfectly uh, level. Okay, and let's go ahead and grab the go to transform and we'll grab the copy tool here and we will copy from the center to the center 
and hit enter. We'll select both of these lines, go to curve tools and tween between two curves. Set the number to two. By default, it's probably one and hit enter. You should get this where they're divided into thirds. Now you don't have to divide it perfectly into thirds. You could have, you could use the curve offset and do maybe you want 1.2 for the top or maybe you want to, that's a little much for this one. You maybe you could do 0.9 and then uh, maybe do uh, from the bottom, you could do 0.7 and then just let the middle be whatever it is. But in this case, I'm going to, I mean, you can do all kinds of things with that, but I'm going to uh, do perfectly, you know, perfect thirds and we will close off the center section here. Oops, try that again. So I'm just snapping a straight line from end to end. Select all of these and join them together. I'm gonna to go into perspective view. We'll grab solid tools and extrude that out. Make sure both sides is on. And then we'll select the bezel, uh, Boolean difference and click on this, delete it. And that is our two gallery rails right there. I'm going to turn the cutter off for a minute, grab the fillet tool, select everything, hit enter a couple times. And so we've got our fillets on there, bring the cutter back, and you just cut the top with Boolean difference. Okay, so this is your two gallery rails, and this is something you could use as a basis to uh, create, for instance, oops, I meant to turn on the gym. You could create a basket setting, you'd have to create prongs here uh, but this is, I'm not going to go over that in this particular tutorial. All right, so that is just a quick overview about how to create a bezel or set of gallery rails for a non-round gemstone using the jewelry kit. Even if you don't have the jewelry kit, you could make an outline for your gemstone and do this. But uh, I really hope later to make a series of videos going more in depth on how to use all of the tools in the jewelry kit. I just haven't been able to get around to that right now. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see all of you in future videos.